You may remember from my last review that I was not particularly fond of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Flashback. Everything looks so day-to-day -day and ordinary. Boring veils spectacularly. Boring flat-out awful. They all look the same. Everyone wears the same thing all the time. Boring. Mundane. It makes no sense. The biggest problem with that was the vision and direction of Chris Columbus, who was also at the helm for Chamber of Secrets. Most of the same problems from Sorcerer's Stone are still present here, namely lack of imagination in sets and costumes, and bland delivery and portrayal of young characters combined with an incredibly lengthy runtime. So I'm not going to hit those criticisms again. What I will talk about is what surprised me watching this movie again, and that is that I had a good time for the most part. I think I'm gonna be sick. I give all credit of this once again to the adult actors. The main ones from Sorcerer's Stone return and do a decent job, but with a few key additions. Kenneth Branagh joins the cast as Gilderoy Lockhart, and Jason Isaacs takes on the role of Lucius Malfoy. Along with them comes Toby Jones, voicing Dobby the House Elf. Branna is by far my favorite part of this whole movie. There's a lot of problems with Chamber of Secrets, especially in design areas and runtime, but all of that disappears around Lockhart. The sets he's in are wondrous and interesting to look at, and oh my god, he has the best costumes. He might even have the best costumes in the entire series. Look at this one he wears while dueling. It has a cape and gloves and what looks like a fencing jacket. He would look right at home with a sword in his hand, ready to instruct students on their grip. And look at this! Here he is acting like a smug dick in front of a picture of him painting a picture of himself. This is absolutely wonderful to look at. I just love this shot. The main sets that he's associated with are his classroom here, the bookshop where we first meet him, and the dueling club. These also happen to be three of the most interesting sets in this movie, as well as its predecessor. Branna seems to make everything around him better, even the young actors and especially his peers, like when he's dueling Alan Rickman's Professor Snape. Expelliarmus! Do you think he's alright? Who cares? Lockhart is by far the most fully realized character in either of Chris Columbus' Potter movies. The other new characters add a lot of enjoyment to this movie as well. Mr. Malfoy's elitism fits Jason Isaacs really well, and Toby Jones is great as the voice of Dobby. The animation on Dobby doesn't look all that great, and I remember hoping that they would have made Dobby a hybrid CG puppet kind of thing, but it's not too bad. Beyond these positives, however, the movie is extremely lacking, much in the same way that Sorcerer's Stone was. I hate how Hermione continues to go without a personality. She exists to solve plot problems for the protagonists. Other characters don't even seem particularly fond of her, and she gets turned to stone later in the film, removing what personality she did have entirely. She's on the same level as a sonic screwdriver from Doctor Who, or R2-D2 from Star Wars. She provides plot armor for Ron and Harry, and she's not treated as her own character. Have a problem that needs solving? Don't worry, Hermione will remember that one spell that she read in that one book that one time and save the day. Need information from Malfoy? Boom! Obscure potion that she makes because she read it in a book in the library. Locked door? Hermione knows the spell to open it, because she read through her textbooks over the summer. Killer snake stalking the halls? No problem. 
Hermione had it figured out before anyone else. Although, she seems to get punished on account of that and gets turned to stone so that Harry and Ron can appear to have problems to solve by themselves when in reality they just waste a bunch of time with some giant spiders. To be honest, Harry and Ron are pretty useless in the grand scheme of things. Although Harry does most of the work cleaning up, these first two movies should be renamed Hermione Granger solves everyone's magical problems and Harry and Ron are there too. I guess. Congratulations, I can't believe you solved it. Well, we had loads of help from you. We couldn't have done it without you. While I did have a good time watching it, Chamber of Secrets is not a very well-made movie. Its many problems are only slightly offset by the positives, but the positives are pretty entertaining. If you could just watch Kenneth Branagh's part, then I think you'd be okay. But for the movie as a whole, I give it another two out of four stars. Why are you wearing glasses? Uh, um, reading. Reading? Mm -hmm. I didn't know you could read. <laughs>